Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. Today I'm here with a full review of Blue's new phone, the Pure View. So they've kind of changed things up a little bit. This isn't part of the Vivo series. It's not one of the one letter, one number versions like the R1 or the S1. This is the Pure View. And part of the reason they call it that is because of the fantastic 5.7 inch uh, 18 by 9 aspect ratio screen that's got on it, which is pretty fancy. But it's available today. You can check it out on Amazon.com uh, exclusively. It's normal MSRP is $199, but on sale limited time for $129.99. You can check the link down in the drop down. And it's also in my full review with AndroidCentral.com. But now that we got that out of the way, let's get into the phone. So one thing I really like, I got the cool design on the box here, just like the Vivo 10 or the X, whichever you want to call it. Uh, they got some of the spec rundown on the back, which we'll get more into throughout the review, but just to look at it at first glance, it's got a 5.7 inch HD plus display with the 18 by nine wide widescreen aspect ratio, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's got a curved Corning Gorilla Glass display, which the curved display is still non-functional, but they did find a way to make it more seamless and integrated better into the frame and the form factor on the phone. So instead of having that weird bump, you know, whenever the screen meets the rest of the, the side of the phone, it's, it's smooth, which is nice. It has a 720 by 1440 resolution, which is 282 pixels per square inch, or pixels per inch, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's got a powerful octa-core 1.3 gigahertz processor, and that is going to be the MediaTek uh, 6753, which we've seen in both the R2, the R2 Plus and the Vivo uh, 8L. So uh, nothing new on the CPU forefront. It's still got three gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage, which are modest, but not bad, uh, especially in a budget tier phone. It's got a 13 megapixel main camera with LED flash, and it's got dual 8 megapixel front cameras, which is cool. Uh, also with an LED flash, and of course, Blue's Final Touch software, which is the bee's knees. It's got an advanced security fingerprint sensor. It doesn't say it here, but it has facial recognition to unlock your phone, which is really cool. Uh, and it doesn't make you feel all awkward like some of the other brands where it shows your face and you're like, ooh, me like my eyes. Uh, it's got an LTE course 150 megs per second it's unlocked for uh, gsm carriers 3000 milliamp battery and if running android 7.0 nougat straight out of the box which has been pretty common for the last year and premium metal housing design all of that to get to this the pure view so I'll give you a second to kind of take it in there um if you notice the form factor on it, you can see that it looks a little bit more elongated. Uh, it's got that wide screen, especially whenever you want to watch you know, video and things like that, which goes lends itself to the pure view. Um, but it looks kind of like the Galaxy S8 or the S9, but if you can look here, it doesn't have the awkwardly placed fingerprint sensor on the back like the S8 and the S8 Plus. So no reaching up and over to here. It's right there smack dab in the middle where it should be. And it works well. Uh, it's a little slow, uh, almost kind of, laggy or spongy if you will so you can see the light on the phone whenever it lights up to see i'm pressing it there's a little bit of a delay there which i'm not overly crazy about but it works and it's a fingerprint sensor so and it's also a 129 phone right now uh i'll show you the thing the face facial recognition so we can unlock it by looking at it now you're not gonna be able to see my face so I can get my face around the camera here. All right, so you have to turn it on like this. Ta-da, and a little unlock icon popped up down there. So it's pretty neat, oh, you couldn't see that. So the screen has to be on for it to work. And then there we go, got my face. And then you swipe up. It's kind of annoying, I don't know why they do that, especially even like on Apple with Face ID. <laughs> you go through the process of unlocking it with your face and then voila, you have to swipe up. So I'm not crazy about that, but see, there we go. And it's unlocked. And it works pretty quick. Actually, it works about as fast as a fingerprint sensor. So it really gives you the best of both worlds, which is nice. Because um, I, I hated when I had my iPhone 10 and it was like, it was great if I'm sitting at the table eating a bowl of cereal or you know having a sandwich or whatever, and I would just want to look down at my phone and turn it on. But whenever I don't want to do that and I'm doing things that require me not looking at my phone, it's really nice to have the fingerprint sensor built in. So best of both worlds in the worst case scenario you can use a pin or a password so we'll go ahead and take the case off real quick you can see the outside of the phone 
Uh, this one does fit a little bit more snug than some of the other ones, which is nice because some of them in the past have been a little loose, but it's just this little thin TPU case, but it's about the best that you're going to get because there's not really any aftermarket support for them. Um, so as you look here, I mean, the form factor on it, it's really sleek. Um, it's rounded off. <laughs> it doesn't have that weird notch thing on the side here anymore for the glass. So I really like the direction that they're headed with their phones aesthetically. And this one's probably the best that I've seen yet. I mean, if it didn't have the blue logo and I didn't know it were a blue phone, it could really pass for something else. And I think that says a lot about what blue is trying to do and the direction they're headed in with their devices. So super cool beans. Now let's get into the device a little bit. I, all I did, I went ahead and I downloaded some of my favorite apps and put them on here, but I left everything pretty much as stock as can be uh, with regard to how it's going to look when you fire it up. So looking here on the, on the phone, why they keep including, keep including the opera browser. I don't know if anyone still uses that, please feel free to send me a message, but, um, you got Google Chrome down there, which is all you need more generally. But it has the full Google suite on it. Uh, it's very bare bones. Thankfully, um, I, I'm glad that you can still swipe to the right and get to the, uh, the Google Assistant, which is cool. I don't have it set up, but you can have it set up where you say, okay, Google, and it'll turn your phone on. Oh, apparently it recognized it anyway. It's kind of like saying, you know, bath, you know, around your dog. <laughs> Eventually they'll figure out what it means and they'll run off. So don't say the words o.k.google whenever this is around because, okay, Google. There you go. It's always listening. And I didn't set it up, so it's like that on its own. So you swipe down from the top, that'll get you your quick settings, which you can edit and you can change out here to set it up the way you want it. Uh, then you have the full settings here, which is standard for Android 7.0. The only real extra stuff they have in here is the blue privacy, which you can do that, help improve products, enhance device support. And then everything else is pretty much standard. Um, one cool thing, um, if you go into display here, they have mirror vision, so you can go ahead and optimize the display, which gives you the ability to tune it and make it look a little better. Uh, adaptive brightness, I always turn that off because I hate how it changes its on its own. But you can do screencast. <laughs> so the screencast is really cool that you can do that this go around. Um, another step in the right direction. I use it all the time with uh, Direct TV Now on my TV. That's how I've been watching the NBA playoffs. So nice being able to do that with, with this device now. Uh, it's got 51 apps installed. Of course, I installed about 12 of those last night. Um, for some reason or another, they included Candy Crush. Um, I guess people still play that. I don't know. But uh, they have like Wish, uh, TalkBack, Smart News, which I just recently installed Smart News on my other phone by itself. It does have uh, Prime Video built in, which is cool. Um, I downloaded Netflix, a couple of little games here. But mostly, it just has the standard complement of Google stuff and a couple of things that Blue thought hey, we'll go ahead and throw this on here and maybe people will enjoy it. All right, so some of the things that you might care about. Um, performance. Um, I went ahead and put all my stuff here in, in this folder for the things that I tested it out on. And this is usually the general stuff that I like to test my phones out on because it's the stuff I use. So it doesn't matter if I'm on an iPhone, if I'm using a blue phone, if I'm using a Samsung phone. I use all of these apps, except for Dragon Ball Legends. I downloaded that to see how it was. Um, I think it's not very good, but maybe you'll like it. But just so you can get a kind of a feel for the speed here and the ability for the games to be played on the phone, because pretty much you know, most people play games on phones nowadays. So it's... I mean, it's not as fast as some phones could be with starting up, but as you can see, it runs completely smooth, which... Uh, I have to say that the processor, even though it's the same 1.3 gigahertz processor we've been seeing for like the last eight months, um, I guess they finally got it down with uh, the programming and the software because it is light years, well, maybe only one light year, not quite two light years. But I mean, look how smooth this is. It's, it's far and away much better than what I have seen before out of the same processor. So, I mean, Pretty darn smooth, so I'm definitely very happy with this, and I like to play alto. So, 
Uh, you know, that's just one of the games. You probably don't want to see my Boom Beach count. But, you know, this one right here, this Mars Mars game, it's actually pretty... It's a very simple game, but surprisingly, it's intensive uh, on hardware requirements. And I have run it on, you know, another blue phone before. Actually, maybe two blue phones before. And it shuddered a lot. It really wasn't enjoyable to play. And, you know, they seem to have gotten it squared away now where I guess maybe it's software optimization. You can see it's not the fastest in the world to start, but it's not slow. I mean, it's, it's pretty good for a 1.3 gigahertz processor. So, all in all, I mean, the game runs really well. And I didn't get this kind of performance before, so I thought whenever I installed this, I almost didn't install this game because I was worried about showcasing it and being like, you know what, uh, this sucks and you know, I really don't think this is a selling point. But I went ahead and I gave it a go anyway and pleasantly surprised. So one cool thing I'm gonna show you here as you probably noticed, there's no capacitive buttons. There's no fixed capacitive buttons. So what do you do? You swipe up from the bottom. So they took away the wonky, uh, you know, swipe up from the bottom to get to the options and then swipe down to get to the notification shade alone. Uh, that weird thing they did for a little while with some of their phones. So now you get the drop down shade for notifications, the further drop down for the quick settings, of course, the full settings, but you swipe up to get to these soft, uh, home menu and uh, back keys, which I really like. And it's very reminiscent and comfortable, uh, just like I, I use the, the S9 Plus as my daily driver. So there really wasn't any sort of a transition loss going from one to the other. So as you can see, works pretty well. Uh, one thing you do need to pay in mind of is the memory management. If you're gonna see this thing shutter or slow down, it's gonna be because you have too much stuff loaded into it. Uh, if you're running like 10, 12 different apps at once, you've got Instagram open, you got Facebook open, uh, you got Alto, you got everything else under the sun. It's going to eat up your memory management, which is what takes away your ability to multitask and, you know, to, to eat up that processing power. So you definitely want to be careful with that. Um, so if you got a bunch of stuff, you know, go ahead and every once in a while clear some of it out just to keep your speed up. All right, let's move on to the camera. So the camera, I'll go ahead and show you the base shutter speed right here. All right, so this is looking down the table here. There's the box. Yeah, let me turn the sound on. I have do not disturb mode on. And of course, <laughs> you press the button and you get the sound. All right, so sound's on now. You can hear the shutter speed. All right, so focus here. So the shutter speed's not too bad. Uh, sometimes, especially whenever it's having to think, you know, the, the autofocus is not the fastest in the world, but whenever it's autofocusing, you know, it, you can mess with it if you press the button too many times or if you try and take a picture whenever it's blurry. Uh, the biggest problem that I had that slowed things down uh, was having the flash on and low light settings. There's a low light, see, it's a little bit slower with the flash, but all in all, it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, I was initially not too terribly impressed with the camera, but after I turned the auto flash off and realized that it's not the greatest for mixed light settings, it seems like it kind of throws the image processor off and, and gives it some problem thinking, problems thinking, uh, just like me when I'm trying to talk. Um, whenever there's a lot of light or there's lower light, it does better, I think, than it does whenever there's mixed light. Like I was in my bedroom, and the bathroom light was on around the corner. I was trying to take a picture of something and it just wasn't working, but I turned the flash off, it worked better. Um, and then, you know, in a optimum lighting setting, it works pretty well. Um, but that's not what's gonna get you. Uh, the cool things around here uh, are the different modes that it has. So uh, you can do your HDR, you can do low light mode. Uh, you get your, hold this down, you got your face beauty mode. You got your panorama mode, which panorama, I can't really do that inside, but if you've ever used a blue phone before, you've used another phone that has panorama, you start taking the picture, <laughs> you rotate the phone around, and it gives you that weird squish panoramic shot. So I'm gonna show you some of the magic right here. Now to get to the settings, you just swipe over to the left and it gives you all the bells and whistles. So you get GPS, your, you can change the exposure, the white balance, image properties, anti-flicker. You can set what you use the volume keys for, so you can do it to shoot, zoom, or volume. 
uh, when you're in camera mode. Uh, the photo settings, zero shutter delay, which you get that quick, real fast exposure, which is, which is a good thing. If I can figure out how to turn it on. Okay, so you can go into ISO. Turn the microphone on and off, audio mode, video quality, it'll do 1080p at 30 frames per second. Hmm. How to get to these, I'm not exactly sure. Restore defaults. Ah, there we go. Somehow I managed to put it into a mode where those were not available. So I'm not really sure how I did that, but I fixed it. So if you ever get it stuck like that, all you have to do is just restore defaults and then you're good to go. So zero shutter delay, anti-shake, face detection, uh, auto scene detection, raw, self timer, capture number, so you can set up with the shots there. Picture size, it goes up to 13 megapixel, you can tailor it all the way down to one in case you need lower, lower quality, lower, uh, lower resolution photos. It's got all the bells and whistles. Now, ta-da, well, in case you want to see my face, Probably didn't. So you see these two buttons right here. You've got the solo person and then you got the one with two people. So what that does is allows you to turn on wide view. So you get that wide lens photo, which is really cool. So instead of having to do cool, you know, software stuff or set it up just right, all you have to do is just pop that little button there. You get one, you get two for the wide lens. So super cool. Uh, I like it a lot. It's a really cool built-in feature. And you know, you can see this whole wide angle thing is really neat. It's one of my favorite features to come out in the last you know, year or two with the smartphones, especially starting with the LG G6. And now it's something that Blue has incorporated into some of their phones. So as you can see, the camera's pretty cool. Uh, you know, I would go ahead and show you the pictures. Well, I took some pictures of some snow cones earlier, if I can get to them. I took a lot of pictures apparently while I was sitting there. There we go. So these probably are not gonna look very good because you're looking at it through the camera while I'm recording. But if you go to my link down in the drop down for the full review uh, for the cam on the camera section, I actually I uploaded these pictures so you can see them in their full glory. Not that I'm you know the greatest photo taker of all time, but uh, you can get a feel for what kind of pictures you'll get with it. All in all, um, super happy with this device. Um, my expectations were a little low going into it, just because. Um, just because of the specs, you know, I've already covered the R2 plus I've covered the, uh, I covered the uh, S1. I covered also the, um, the Vivo 8L and we're talking of the same processor. So I was like, you know what, this is probably going to be a little bit of a disappointment. You know, here we are eight months later with the same processor, but somehow I don't know what they did. Uh, but they were able to uh, squeeze some more juice out of it and boost the performance in a way that really helps the efficiency and makes it to where some some of those games and apps that I would have thought were out of the reach of this phone uh, make it where they're comfortable and pleasant to use. Uh, like you saw with some of the games that I that I was running there, and you're not going to be able to go out there and probably run War Robots or you know some of the other higher intensive 3D rendering games, but probably 80% of the stuff that's out there, you'll be able to play no problem, which is good. So I think I've hit about all the bases. Uh, it's got quick charge. Uh, it's got a 2.5 amp, five volt uh, charger that it comes with it. It's still USB 2.0, which one day they will wake up and see the light and move on to USB-C like the rest of the world. But for right now, it's kind of hard to get all those features into a $129 phone. Um, you can see down here on the bottom, of course, they've got the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which I'm still grateful that they put in there. The speaker on here, it's got the downward firing driver. It's, you know, it, this phone very much emulates the Samsung Galaxy S8. Uh, if only it em emulated the sound better. Not too crazy about the sound. It's good for watching video and things like that. You get the nice wide screen, you know, 18 by nine aspect ratio. It's great for watching, whoops. Great for watching video. It's great for media. It's great for social media but the sound is not so good. So if you're a strict audiophile and you like uh, to listen to <coughs> high quality music and things like that, you'll hear some occasional cracking. It 
the driver just can't keep up with it and produce you know that broad spectrum high high powered sound but for just normal vocals and sound and being able to watch you know youtube netflix uh, amazon prime video and watch movies binge watch tv shows it works really well um it's it's very well tailored for vocals so you can watch tv shows you know in relative enjoyment so all in all i, I really like the phone i'm impressed with it, what they've done with it both under the hood and outside um the form factor the design the build quality uh, the metal body you really can't ask for much better than this in the 129 dollar range and you know even at 199 dollars, i'd say it's worth it and it competes with other phones you know inside and just up out of that bracket you know two or three hundred dollar price range and I, I was running this side by side against my Snapdragon 625 uh, and my BlackBerry Motion, and this was keeping up with it well, especially when it comes to like Boom Beach and some other things that are running a lot of problems and uh, video stuff at once. So, all in all, good phone. Uh, check it out. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed the review. Check out the unboxing video. If you want some more information, I've got the full written review in the drop down on Android Central. You can check it out there with the community review team. As always, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your subscription, share, tell your friends, and hopefully you, this was helpful for you and you got the information you wanted on this phone so you could decide whether it's something you want for you. But if you do, hit it now while you can get it for 70 bucks off because uh, those go pretty quick. And that's all I've got. Y'all have a great night.